All right, hello everybody. We are a team Iron Rain, like they introduced us. And today we're here to talk to you a little bit about FTC dashboard. And over the summer, we did uh, add a couple of uh, additions to the field view. And we'd like to share that with you now. Okay, so uh, what is dashboard? Well, uh, I'm sure a lot of you already know, but dashboard is an open source telemetry monitoring tool for FTC robots, which allows you to make real time adjustments to all of, uh, to variables and see the results of those on a display on your browser when you're connected to the robot. So it allows for some real time code testing and makes uh, code testing a lot faster. So dashboard was actually developed by the same guy that made Roadrunner. And I had a lot of conversation about Roadrunner today. And so you might recognize Ryan Brock, a lot of robots. And its debut season was in 2018 during Roadrunner. So face, how does dashboard work? So um, it's a React-based uh, browser application. And what it does is it goes into your control hub, tells it to set up a node server, and that opens up a a server for the React-based UI to get into. And then everything else that we do as just FTC teams, we connect the uh, control hub with ADD, and that's how we push code. And the driver station and the robot controller apps interactions are entirely separate from what dashboard is. So for a quick poll, uh, can we see some hands? Uh, who uses dashboard? It's amazing a lot of you. All right. So yeah, then I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this because a lot of you have. And so just a basic installation, you go to Acme Robotics dashboard, uh, at dashboard repo. Uh, getting started, add that into your build dependencies.gradle, and then you're pretty much good to start coding. And so that QR code over there is the repo that we were talking about. All right, yeah. So um, just because a lot of teams do use it, and because it is technically an extension to your robot, um, you are actually not allowed to use it during matches. So you can use it at competitions, but not during matches. Uh, it's just an important thing we need to make sure to disclose to everyone. If you were using it during matches, you can't. So yeah. Okay, uh, the primary feature set the dashboard does provide, and this is what makes it so useful to us, is uh, it's basically a wireless access and control tool. It gives us a telemetry and graph view. It gives us a field view. It gives us config variables that we can go in and change during runtime. It gives us control over which off mode we're selecting and whether it's started, knitted, whatever. And it gives us a live camera feed. So um, a big part of dashboard, of course, is the telemetry and graph data part. So um, what you can do is you can output your telemetry that you usually send your driver station straight to dashboard uh, and see it real time uh, change with the values on your robot. And also you can send those that data to the graph uh, view and it will display it on a graph as you can see up there for the sine wave. We did. Yeah. And that bottom right graph over there is actually from our games and that is our hit controller being graphed, so it's much easier to see. Um, up next, we have config variables. So these are very basically variables that you set up um, by annotating your op mode with an app config, and then you any public static variables will be exposed to dashboard, and then you can go in and edit them, and this all happens really seamlessly during runtime, which is super, super useful when you're like tuning, because you don't have to stop the robot, you have to build again, and restart the control hub, and all that. It's really smooth. It happens during one time and it's really convenient. So yeah, uh, we also, it also of course has the op mode controls. You can switch, select uh, which op mode you want to run, run it all from dashboard. And you can see your live camera feed uh, with the camera part of, of dashboard where you can see where, what your robot's seeing. For example, we have an April tag up there that we were using last season and you can see that we're reading it in and processing it. So yeah. Okay, and now here's kind of the main attraction of today's presentation. Yeah, the field view. This is what it looks like by default. It's a power play field because screen control is taken during power play. But it's a power play field that's completely blank and you can essentially draw drawing primitives over it. And this was pretty good, but um, we did end up running into a lot of issues during the season where um, Roadrunner and um, dashboards visualization, so the field view, they have different uh, origins and different origin headings, so rotations, and that got that became a headache, and we didn't exactly manage it correctly, and spiraled into field view becoming very, very difficult for us, and so we needed a flexible origin that's included in an X, Y, and a default kind of heading data. 
So what we decided to do is we uh, we forked the repo, uh, made a pull request, and we have transformations. So um, what transformations are is they allow for uh, rotations and scaling and translation across the field view in order to see, as you can see in that image up there, uh, red, that red circle moving across the screen makes that all much simpler. We you get to basically offset your origin and scale it. So it's all very simple, simple and similar to HTML canvas and allows for a lot more versatility in the uh, dashboard itself. So yeah, uh, and then we got kind of carried away, I'm not gonna lie. So um, we did start with just uh, origin movement, transformations like scaling and rotation. And then we were like, wait, can't we put images on here because it's just HTML canvas? And so we did. Um, that's our logo, uh, shameless plug. But what it does is uh, for images, you might be wondering, hey, doesn't that have like a really bad performance impact because images are larger files and data like primitives? Um, what it does is it goes with the build onto the control hub. And then whenever you open up dashboard, it caches on your dashboard machine. So it's really, really fast and it's more seamless than you would think. And we also have text support. So now you can label things and they're much easier to see. So yeah, uh, now we're going to show a quick demo of the new features we added. So yeah, uh, and then of course have our QA. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them during the demo. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to I'm going to select the op mode using dashboard. So keep in mind that we do not have a driver station up here. This is a great thing about dashboard. You don't need a driver station for anything anymore. I mean, ideally, right? And so we have a control hub here with us. And we're just going to run a quick little uh, demo for y'all on here. And so once you start, you can see that's the normal field view. And we have a little right hand okay. And so, do we have any questions while that's going? Uh, just kind of go on the background. We covered everything. That's crazy. Do we have any questions online? I guess not. Then I'll talk through the presentation. So right here we have uh, an editor, Rick Ashley, because we like Rick Ashley. We love Rick Ashley. So what it's doing is, as you can see, he's setting the config variable, and that's updating pretty much why on the build game. So what that's doing is it's sending the config variables back into the control hub. That control hub is running the code. And it's been like, oh, I need to do this. Keep in mind though that if you are not sending your images with build and you're giving it a live URL, like I think that's a Wikipedia convince URL. Um, we do have a separate network network adapter up here that's and so that we can connect to the control hub and to the internet at the same time. And we can display like that's a beautiful page on our page. And this this again it comes with a lot of its own options. That red circle we like to call the origin circle. It's a circle at the origin. And um yeah, and he's uh scaling it and he's changing the color, literally just like that. Yeah, and it shows green. So it's all pretty seamless. It's pretty intuitive, especially if you know HTML canvas. And yeah, um, we kind of feel you plus plus. So yeah. Again, any questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, we just got our pull request accepted, so that was great. Um, it has been released 4.4.11 or 4.12, so that should be the newest release update from uh, Mr. Brock's repo, and they should be in there. So now you can display uh, ring gasoline on your field whenever your robot breaks. <clears throat> Any other questions? Cool, and we'd like to talk a little bit about kind of the whole scope of this. Why we did this, what, what is the end result? And so we did kind of start with just, hey, what if I could move the origin, that'd be kind of nice, right? And that spiraled into a lot of things. And so 
we started with the custom origin just just for the sake of making sense with Roadrunner because we use Roadrunner too. Um, you can also visualize things much more clearly for debugging uh, if you can draw everything you want to your screen. Uh, you can add labels for judges to understand uh, because the way we do it is our presentations have direct screenshots of our plain navigation from dashboard, and you can now label things with text, which is pretty cool. And you can you can go beyond FPC. Here's one of the challenges that is a software view on the FPC dashboard field view, and so you can you can build for the URG six can. You can build for FRC if you wanted to. You can, you can kind of do whatever you want with this. You can take FTC dashboard field view. You can turn it into just a really powerful visualizing tool now. So yeah, thank you.